Welcome to ELT Gallery channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about the interpersonal metafunction of systemic functional grammar. The interpersonal metafunction is a function of language which expresses the speaker's attitude to what he is talking about. To be more specific, in this video, I'm going to talk about the mood system. Mood is part of a sentence where a speaker expresses his attitude toward what he is talking about. Now, let's start. I will continue using the sentences in the hotel with a slight modification. Could you spell your last name? Could you wife spell your last name? Well, we have two sentences here. The first is, could you spell your last name? This is a request of the speaker to the audience to spell the last name. It asks for a piece of information on the spelling of uh, the audience or the second person last name here. But if you have, could your wife spell your last name? This sentence is not said at the hotel because if the receptionist says the sentence to the guest, then the guest will be very angry. But if they said by two friends and the man here and the, the person here asks, could your wife spell your last name? Then it, uh, it's kind of a humor that how can you have such a difficult name or how can you have such a strange name so that I'm wondering, I'm wondering whether your wife can spell your last name. So here we see that the subject is a little different. The subject are different, you and your wife, but the meanings of the two sentences are completely different. Do you have the city map? Here in the commodity which the clause expresses the commodity of goods and service. The addresser here wants to have the city map and he or she asks the receptionist to give the city map. What about if we change the sentence into, did you have the city map? Well, with the change of the tense here from do to date, from present to past, then the sentence is not about commodity of goods and service anymore. Did you have the city map? This is already in the past then. Well, if you did, then why didn't you tell me or why didn't you lend me the city map? So this one is not asking for the city map of this one. This sentence is blaming the receptionist. You had the city map and asked, and I asked you the direction to the city and you didn't give us, you didn't give me the city map. So the two sentences have different meaning if the tense is changed from present to past. In the first, the commodity is about goods and service, and in the second sentence, the commodity is about information that the addressee shows his complaint or says his complaint to the receptionist. We have this cell phone was very expensive. With the use was here, it shows that uh, drop in the phone here was an old version, an old type. It was very expensive when it was issued, but now after five years, it's not expensive anymore. So, so here the addressee wants to say that this cell phone was a good type, was a good brand when it was issued, but now this one is not good anymore. And this is different from this cell phone is very expensive. The cell phone is old and probably not very old because now it's still expensive or probably the cell phone here is new. So we have a different of tense, pre past and present, or we have a different of subject, you and your wife, but the meaning of the sentences with the change of the subject or the change of the tense are very, very different. And that shows the importance of a subject. A subject is not just what the sentence is about, but it also talks more about the attitude of the speaker, the attitude of the addresser. The sentences here also show the importance of tense. The tense, with the change of the tense, the content of the sentence can be very, very different. Again, we have subject and tense. 
which are important for the meaning of a sentence. And subject of tense here constitutes the mood. So mood is a part of a sentence which consists of the subject and the tense, or the element of a sentence which carries the tense. Or once again, mood is the part of a sentence which expresses or which contains the subject and tense. Now, let's see what mood is. Mood is part of a sentence which consists of the subject and finite verb. That's the definition of mood. It's part of a sentence which consists of the subject and the finite verb, or subject and finite. We have John Will. Submit this paper next week. So here the mood is just John Will. Submit this paper next week is another part of a sentence, the second part of the sentence. The mood is just John and Will. The show is, or the show was, cancel. The mood is, the show is, and the show was. Here, the mood is subject and violent. John is a sub here, John is a subject and will is the violent. A violent is a, a verb form which changes its form if we change the tense on if we change the subject. If we have a present here, John will. If we have past, we have John would. The show is present and the show was is past. So the mode, once again, is part of a sentence which consists of the subject and violent. And then submit this paper next week and cancel are what they call residue. It is the predicator, submit and cancel. So it's the non finite verb. It's the predicator or the complement on the object in the traditional grammar. His, his paper here is the complement. Or next week here, a jump. So a residue is the rest of a sentence. It's a, it's, it's a rest of a sentence besides the finite. It can be the predicator, complement, and a jump. Now, a subject and a finite. A subject here expresses the participants of the process. It's a, pre a participant in the process. It can be actor, it can be goal, it can be a sayer, it can be a sensor. But it's a participant of the process, and it usually, it, in English, and in English, it occurs before the predicate. It can be a nominal group, and we can usually substitute a subject with a pronoun like he, she, it, or any other subjective pronouns like they or we. And then a finite. A finite is a part of a sentence which expresses a speaker's attitude of the process. The full form here carries a tense information like es or zero if we have, uh, if the subject is I or you and they or yeah, you, we, and they, or ed if we have the past. Or it can be models. So find it is the verb form which carries a tense information or models. We can say that uh, find it is a verb form which changes the form when the tense on the subject is changed. Let's discuss more about find it. The first, it's about tense. So, a finite expresses the validity of a process according to the present time. If what we say is connected to the present time or at or to any other time, that's valid. The process is valid if, if it has some connection with the present or with the past. If it doesn't have any connection with the present or the past, and it doesn't have a connection with the actual situation, then the sentence is not finite. It doesn't be specific. Finite means specific or definite. Here, it's specific because of the present time or at any other time or because of the actual situation. The process is connected to a specific time to a specific actual situation. And then finite may also express polarity. It's either negative or positive. John is a doctor, is positive, and John is a doctor, is negative, validity. So with the violin, we can see whether something is negative or positive. Something is, uh, we can see the polarity, it's negative or positive. 
And then it also expresses modality, the attitude towards the proposition or towards the information or towards the proposal. So in the violin, we have the attitude towards what we are talking about. So the violin expresses three things, the tense, polarity, and modality. And modality is the attitude of the addresser towards the proposition, towards the information which he says, or towards the proposal, the goods and service which he conveys or which he demands. We have examples. Plus attendance does not affect achievement. Here we have the present tense does not affect achievement. This one is negative and ex expresses something which is uh, will certainly happens or it's true that plus attendance does not affect achievement. According to the knowledge of the addresser, to the best knowledge of the addresser, plus attendance is not important for achievement. Can you finish your paper next week? This one asking for ability or probability, whether the audience here, the second person here, has the ability of finishing the paper next week. Or it may also ask the audience, the second person here, to finish the paper next week. That's the attitude of the speaker, the addresser to the to what he's talking about, whether it's probable for the second person to finish the paper next week. The government must do more for the people in the remote areas. Here, it's a strong obligation for the government to do something for the people in the remote areas. If the government does not do something for the people in the remote areas, then probably the government will lose something and the people will suffer more. So the word must here shows the attitude of the speaker towards the action which the government has to do. With must here, the government has a strong obligation to do something for the people in the remote areas with the consequence. If not, then the government will lose something and the people in the remote areas will suffer more. Well, a clause consists of violent and residue. The violent is a subject and violent verb, and the residue is a predicator, complement, and adjunct. We have predicator. The predicator can, in the stem form, like I will go, the predicator is go. Or it can be stem plus en, like he has gone home. Gone here is the predicator. John is eating. Eating here is the predicator. And then a complement can be a pronoun, a nominal group, or any other group coming after the predicate. Or in traditional grammar, it's called the object. And then we have a jam, like manner, carefully, or time, yesterday, place here, and any other element showing circumstantial information like instrument with a knife or, or means of transportation like by bus or reason like uh, because of the rain. So a jang can be manner, time, place or any other element showing circumstantial information. Now let's see the mood system in English. This is the mood system in English. We have, if you have an independent clause, it can be indicative or imperative. The indicative mode is marked with the presence of, this is realized with the real realizations or with the presence of plus subject and plus vanit. So if you have the indicative mode, we have the subject and vanit. If you have imperative, like open the door, clean the floor, give me your book, here we don't have the subject and we don't have find it either. Just open the door, clean the floor, or give me your book. Give, clean, close, open. Then indicative can be interrogative or declarative. If we have declarative mode, then we have a subject which should come before find it. This is order. A declarative indicative clause 
should have a subject before the finite. If we have interrogative, an interrogative mode can be WH here, which is realized, which is marked with the realizations of WH word, and then it must have a finite after that. And it can be a subject question like who is crying here, who is, who is the subject and is crying, is, is the finite and crying is the residue. Or we can also have the non-subject WH interrogative, like what did you say? Here, what is the WH and here did is the finite. You here is a subject and say is the residue, the, pre the predicator. If we have a yes no question, the order must be reversed. It's marked with the realizations here is with the finite first and then the subject of that, like does John study here. And then when we have declarative, we have non exclamative like Mary looks tired. This is non exclamative, just a normal indicative sense. Mary looks tired. John is happy. The house is empty. He came late. That's non-exclamative. If we have an exclamative declarative, it is marked with the realizations of a WH word, like what a beautiful house. So we have what over here. It must be what or how beautiful. And then we have the Joseph. The Joseph can be unmarked, like close the door. Or it can be marked. If you have marked, then we have the presence of you over here. You close the door. So a Joseph is the usual command. We have the unmarked, close the door without the subject. And we have the mark with you, you close the door. And then we have the suggestive, which is marked with the realizations of S over here. Like let's over here, let's. Let's see the movie. So this is suggestive. One, that's all about the motism in English. Thank you very much.